Where does it start, Tim? Starts at the top, Roger. We need to think about a few things, what they call personal protective equipment. We need to think about having our head protected from what they call struck bys, things falling down that could hit us. Have safety glasses on, a face shield to protect our face, safety earmuffs or plugs, gloves when we start handling the saw and working with debris, and then also leg protection. Right, and this isn't any ordinary cloth, right? No, they, they call it, it's made out of ballistic nylon, and it gives you a jamming effect should the chainsaw come in contact with it. Hopefully to lessen an injury should that accident occur. And that's a good thing. Absolutely. Heavy set of boots? Good set of boots, preferably steel toes, toes. good traction. All right. So we've got the equipment, but we also got to look at the saw when we get started, right? We've got your saw here, so we I need do. to check it out. All right, Tim, where do you get started checking the saw? Well, first thing, a few items, Roger. We want to make sure that we put our gas mix in this hole. Our bar lubricant goes in this hole, our chain lubricant. Next, we want to probably take a look at the chain tension. And here you can see yours is a little loose, Roger. Yeah, I think that needs to be tightened up. What you want is you want it to snap back into the bar, but still move freely around with a gloved hand. Very important when you're handling the blade that you have a glove on. Correct. Shouldn't be hanging below. Next, probably our safety features. First one being back here in the back. This is called the throttle interlock, so that it can't depress the throttle trigger until you're ready, your hand is in the driver's position. In this position like this. Correct, correct. Up here, we have a chain brake system. And here, when you disengage, the chain can move. When the brake goes forward, it stops the chain movement. Okay. Now this also works as a parking brake sometimes, but in case of a reactive force of kickback, your hand comes in contact or just inertia activates it. Okay, safety, good safety feature. The last one down here, chain. If it were to derail off the bar, this is a chain catch. And in this case here, it stops the rotation and shortens the distance the chain can come back to the operator. So it can't grab your hand. Absolutely. Now when I shop in the saw, I use a file that's the correct size for the teeth and I mount it in this gauge. And what I do is I go on this tooth in this direction and it may take a good seven or eight strokes to get that shop in the way I want it to be. I do every other tooth on this side, then I'll turn around and come and do the, every other tooth on the opposite side. Let me show you what I found for my saw. I found a kit that has a bar, a special chain, mm -hmm. and then this sharpening device. You can That's see it a has, sharpening device? It has that grinding stone in there. And what this thing does, it sits on the bar, and now this stone comes down against the chain and sharpens it as it rotates. So you put it on without the engine running, clamp it down, and now I can take, start the engine up and push against the end to sharpen my chain in a matter of seconds. I gotta see this. Safety gear is key. That's why we always put on our helmet and our ear protection before we start the saw. Starting the saw on the ground is the safest way to start it. Once it's started, we're gonna push on the point of the sharpener and that's gonna hit on the blade and sharpen it in three to five seconds. It's all done. We're ready to cut. One of the most common uses of the chainsaw is to turn a log into fireplace length wood. We're gonna use the bar to measure 16 inches for our length of our firewood. Now we're gonna take the saw and we're gonna cut down through the log. He's cutting using the bottom of the blade close to the saw itself, not using the tip. We're gonna go down about three quarters of the way through. Now we're gonna cut three quarters of the way down through the log. We never wanna cut all the way down because we could put our tip into the ground and dull the blade. Now we have a perfect piece of firewood ready to be split. Yeah, we definitely want to move that out of the way because for our next cut, we don't want it to pull in and hit that tip. It could cause a kickback. Okay. And don't forget, we have two other reactive forces to contend with. Down here, it pulls the chainsaw away from us. And if we have to do an undercut, it pushes the chainsaw back. We need to anticipate and understand those forces so they don't overpower us and we can control the chainsaw. Now, those forces are even worse if the chain's dull. They're even tougher if the more pressure that you add. Okay, well, let me clear that out for you. We'll make another cut. Thanks for the safety tips, and thanks for the firewood. Thank you, Roger.